Hey y'all, it's December, so time for another tutorial. This month's box comes to you with a frame that you can use year round um, and two inserts. It's an interchangeable sign. Um, so the first thing we want to work on is the frame. Using your sanding sponge that you got in your starter kit, just lightly go over the edges um, of this frame to smooth it out. You can leave it a little bit more rustic if you like that, or if you like it super smooth, um, go ahead and do a little bit extra sanding. The next thing we're going to do is give it some color. Now you can stain this if you have stain at home that you really like. Um, I use paint on mine and what I did is the baby wipe method, um, which we'll get to in just a second. First, I'm going to mix my colors. Uh, I was going for a kind of a brownish gray, um, so I mixed brown, gray, and white together. And these are just regular uh, paints. And then grab yourself a baby wipe or a damp paper towel, dip it in your paint, and then wipe it onto your project. Um, you can go as light or as heavy as you want to. The lighter you go, the more of the wood grain and wood texture is going to show through to look more like a stain. The heavier you go, it's going to look more like a paint or more full coverage. Um, it's totally up to you. I recommend starting off with a very light coat. Um, you can always go back and add more uh, when you're done if you don't like it. Um, but if you put it on too heavy at first, it's it's harder to, to go backwards. You can sand it down if you're really not happy with it and it's just way too dark. Um, but it's just much easier to start light. Once you're happy with your frame, set it aside and we'll work on the first insert. Pro tip when you're using your paintbrush, if you get it wet just with water um, first before you put paint on it, it cleans up a lot easier in the end. Next, we we'll paint all the other pieces that go on here. I decided to go with a, a black and white looking sign, but you could do any color you want. Here's another pro tip. So when the laser cuts out um, all these pieces, it leaves a little bit of a soot behind. And if you're painting a white or a very light color, sometimes that soot will show through. So I always take a baby wipe and just quickly uh, wipe down the surface. And this will give a nice clean base to start painting.
Next, we're gonna work on the snowflakes. Now in my sample, I did the snowflakes in silver glitter, and I think that looks really cool, but if you're not a glitter fan, which I know a lot of people aren't, that's totally fine. You can just paint these and throw the glitter out. It's totally up to you. If you are gonna do the glitter snowflakes like mine, you're going to wanna first paint the snowflakes a similar color to the glitter that you're gonna be using. So I use silver glitter for mine, um, so I painted the, the snowflakes white first. Gray probably would have been a little bit better, um, but for this it worked just fine. Now in addition to the glitter snowflakes, I also added some snowflakes just painted in the background. And so I'm gonna show you a real quick trick here. I'm gonna use one of these snowflakes as a stamp um, to put some snowflakes in the background. This is a really easy and fun way to add some dimension to your, your projects, especially if you have more of a basic background you're working with. Um, all you gotta do is add a layer of paint and then lay it down on your project like a little stamp and pull up. Next, we're gonna glitter our snowflakes. So you're gonna need Mod Podge, glitter, a sponge, and then something to stir with, like a toothpick. I've portioned this out for you, so you're probably gonna use the whole packet of glitter in this uh, one ounce container of Mod Podge, which is only filled halfway, so it's about half an ounce of Mod Podge. Um, I did it in small increments. So pour a little bit in, stir, pour a little bit more in, stir. It's much easier than just dumping the whole packet in at once. Once you're all good and mixed, then you're going to start painting your snowflakes with it. Um, it's the same method as the uh, makeup sponge painting method that I did earlier. Um, the only difference is when you're painting, you usually want to do light coats. Um, because there's a bunch of glitter in this, it is going to be thicker and chunkier, and that's totally fine. Um, it actually works out a little bit better if you do heavier coats because then you don't have to do quite as many. With the glitter to Mod Podge ratio that I sent you guys, 
Um, you should really only need two coats, maybe three. Then just keep glittering until you're happy with the way it looks. Once everything is dry, then we're going to glue it down. Um, I highly recommend for this particular insert, because it has pieces that are so close to the edge, put it in the frame first and then glue it down. Um, you wouldn't want to glue it a little too close and then not be able to get it inside of the frame. When gluing projects together like this, I prefer a super glue, um, but you can use just about any kind of glue you want. The super glue, it dries clear and it sets fast, so I don't have to worry about pieces moving around and, and getting messy. When you're gluing down the pieces that are really close to the frame, give yourself a little bit of room, maybe an eighth of an inch or so between the piece and the frame. That way you don't have any issues when you go to take the insert out and put it back in again later. And insert number one is complete. Next we'll work on painting insert number two. Just like I did on insert number one, anytime I'm painting a, a light color like white, I always give it a good wipe with a baby wipe first to get all that extra soot off and give myself a nice clean uh, painting surface. and then just start painting your background. Thank you. 
I wanted to give my trees a little bit of a distressed look, so using the sanding sponge, I just lightly give it a good sand. and then wipe it down with a damp paper towel or a baby wipe to get all the dust off when you're done. After everything's dry, you can go ahead and start gluing down. The last thing to do is work on our beaded garland. I'm going to show you a technique that I use to paint my beads. This is going to give you a textured, almost distressed look. If you want a smooth, clean look, you may want to try a different method. Um, but for this project, I wanted the distressed look. So I just put a little bit of paint in the bag with the beads and shake it up. You don't want to put too much paint, um, the beads are going to stick together. So do just a couple of drops at a time. You can always add more if it's not enough, um, which is what I did. I think I added paint for probably four or five different times. Just a little bit at a time, shake it up, see how it looks. If you want more, add more. Once you're happy with the way your beads look, dump them out onto a paper plate or a piece of paper and let them dry. Now not pictured here is the next step I did where after it was dry I went in and I put the beads back in the bag and added a little bit of black paint, shook that up, let that dry, and then again with another coat of white and that gave it kind of a stoned look. Next we're going to string our beads. Uh, I like to put a little piece of tape on the end of my twine um, to keep it from fraying as I try to put the beads on. And then I gave you just enough beads to alternate between the big and small. But you can do any pattern that you want. Once you have all your beads on there, give yourself a little bit of room on either side, probably about six to eight inches or so, maybe a little bit more, and set those aside. Then we're going to start working on the tassels for the ends. Now you can make your tassels as long or as short as you want. 
Um, I used a piece of wood that's about four and a quarter inches long. Um, I just had this laying around scrap in my uh, workshop, but you can use a piece of cardboard cut to size or something else that you have laying around. So I wrapped mine around 20 times and then snipped that off. And then using another piece of twine, you can tie the end off and leave a loop at the end to tie that part onto your beaded garland. Um, to make this part a little bit easier, you can put a, uh, a pencil or a pen or something in that loop to hold it tight. Sometimes I can do it without and sometimes I need a little bit of help. <laughs> So just slide that pin in there to keep everything steady and then you can tie it off underneath. Here I just do a little double knot to keep it in place and I like to use any extra twine that I have and wrap it around a couple of times to get a, give it a little bit of a decorative uh, touch to it and then tie that off again. On this one, I didn't cut my twine quite long enough, so I was kind of struggling to get it tied. Um, but once you have that double knotted, then you can cut off any excess. And lastly, cut the other side of the loop to finish off your tassel. And then set that aside and repeat one more time um, for the second tassel. Once you have both tassels made, then all we're going to do is tie them onto the ends of your beaded garland. To do this, all you need to do is put your twine from your garland strand through the loop on the end of the tassel and double knot it. Um, to make this part easier, I take a toothpick, tie it onto the end of my, or I'm sorry, tape it onto the end of my twine, and that helps me guide the twine through that loop and then you can snip that off you don't need it and just double knot that on there Then cut off all your excess twine and move on to the other side. Once both tassels are tied on and all your excess uh, twine is trimmed, then your garland is done. And that completes our project for this month. Let me know what you guys think and what you want to see next month. I hope y'all enjoyed it.